The scrolling system can be a valuable tool for making fun and delightful apps. In Compose, you probably know the vertical and horizontal modifiers, and that lazy lists are scrollable by default. But you can also use scroll deltas for things like controlling UI that doesn't actually scroll, or for seemingly complex coordination between multiple components. Nested scrolling in Compose allows you to plug into the system and manually delegate scrolling deltas or changes. Components can work with each other by reacting to a single scroll and communicating their deltas. But the condition is that they are linked, but most often by sharing a parent. So how can we achieve this? On a single scroll, we want the podcast image to scale and fade. We also want it sticky at the top. Once it reaches a certain size in alpha, the podcast list starts scrolling. And we also want the fab in the bottom right to slide in and out. The entry point to the scrolling system is a nested scroll modifier. We add it to the box parent composable, one that can oversee and delegate the scrolling deltas of a single gesture to its child components, the image, the lists, and the fab. Nested scroll gives us a peek into the scrolling system, but to control it, we also need a nested scroll connection. This provides four callbacks on pre-scroll and on post-scroll, and the same for the fling gesture. These callbacks reflect the phases of the nested scrolling cycle. When a gesture is detected before any component is actually scrolled, a signal that we need on pre-scroll, we want to get the deltas and use them to change the image size, image alpha, and the fab offset, and then scroll the list. Let's start with the image size. Scrolling deltas come as the available parameter in pre-scroll. We take the Y pixels from it, focusing on the vertical axis. We add that amount, which can be a negative or a positive value, to the current image size to get a new size. We also limit the min and max values of the image to something reasonable. Finally, we use the previous image size and the current one to calculate how much of the scrolling pixels we took and how much we can leave to the list to actually scroll. This means that for every pixel of a scroll, we will first prioritize and take a certain amount for changing the image size and not for scrolling the list. We continue doing that until the image size reaches a min or a max value. When that happens, the consumed variable is zero. When consumed is zero, this is when the list actually starts taking over and scrolling. We pass the new image size to the child image and the nested connection to the parent box, and we get this. But the list isn't pulling up when the image is shrinking. The image and the list are in a box, not in a column. They're not aware of each other's positioning. So we take the image size and we use it as a dynamic offset for the list, one that moves with the image. And voila! Changing the image alpha and the fab offset will be similar. We rely on the same scroll pixels used for changing the image size. We also want to follow the image progress. So if the image size is at 30%, we also want the alpha and the offset at 30%. We use some math to calculate the percentage of the image size, and we use that to calculate the alpha and the offset. We pass the new values accordingly, and we get our final result. For more information on scrolling and compose, take a look at the documentation.